Today's Halloween. All right, this is my engine access. There's my oil filler. Just take this and there's a little hole in the injector head. And that should, oh yeah, it's way off. Okay, back at the bus today. We had like, uh, today's Wednesday. So, it's actually Halloween day today. Happy Halloween! You're gonna get this a few weeks late though. Um, and I'm gonna top off the oil because when I did that uh, with the injector test, a bunch of oil came out of the engine, so I gotta add that back in. I got some Shell, it's a Rotella T1. It's supposed to be good for the two stroke Detroits. Um, it's a certain specification, ultra low ash content, something like that. Um, anyway, it's supposed to be okay. Um, the best one is the, the Delo or Delo, however you say it, 100, but I couldn't find it anywhere out here. Nobody had it. So I had to get the, the, the Rotella T1. So that's fine. So I'm just going to top off the oil. We're going to take it over there back to the, the lot where we were working on it. And uh, we got a bunch of stuff we're going to do today. I got a bunch of stuff that Heidi can really help with a lot. She's excited about it. So um, you'll see. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Alright, this is our engine access. There's my oil filler. Once I get the engine straight, if I can, then I'm going to change the oil in the filters. But I'm just topping it off now because I still got some more work to do. I got to set the lash. I'm going to do all that today. That's why I said I have, I have a bunch of stuff that Heidi can do by herself. And I'm going to let her do that while I'm working on the engine. So we're going to get started together though because I got to let the engine cool down. It's got to be cold before I do the, um, set the valve lash and the timing on the injector. Hi everyone! Um, so since we can't keep the bus in the bus yard and work on it over there, we're having to move it every day. And so I have to drive the RV each day, which at first I was a little afraid to do it. Even though it's only about 25 feet and our car at home is about 17 feet. But I was kind of nervous. But since we've been doing it every single day, now I'm more used to it and I figure I gotta get used to it anyways if I'm gonna drive the bus, which is about 40 feet. So I guess it's good practice. And Johnny said that he's getting used to um, driving the bus also. So that's good. We're both getting used to driving longer vehicles. And I guess it's a good thing that we got the RV since we don't have a truck here because we've been having to put the, all the wood and stuff inside the RV. What do you have, a paintbrush? Very nice. <laughs> okay, I just want to share that little tidbit with you of how I was afraid to drive the RV and now I'm kind of over it. So, that's a good thing. So the oil was really low. Um, it, it was just barely touching the bottom of the dipstick, which is really low. That's why I wanted to add some to it. And like I said, I'm going to change the oil completely and change the filters after I'm done fooling with the engine. But I can't add the oil that I caught back in because when I pulled the fuel lines, diesel went into that fuel, into that oil. So I can't reuse that oil just to top it off. So I have to buy some more oil. So I'm doing that now. And I'll um, check it and see what it looks like. See, now it's just, yeah, definitely need to add more. I'm gonna add another gallon. See, it's right at the edge, right there. It should be between those two. So it's really low. I probably took I probably took three gallons out of it I guess or well, maybe it was low when I started but um, I may add another gallon and we'll just roll with that so I can get this thing up and run it and then check it again I'll wipe off my dipstick so for those of you who don't know how to check oil so I'm sure most most people I don't know maybe not so so most cars have a dipstick like this this is a dipstick and it goes inside the engine and it just touches the oil and then when you bring it back out, you just look at it. And in this case, see we're still a little low from where we should be, but it's good. It's good for now because I just need to um, basically just want to keep working on the engine a little bit. So I'm going to lose a little bit more. But when you pull it out, you first pull it out, you want to wipe it off, get everything off of it, and then you go back in. You stick it back in and you pull it back out again and that's when you check it. In this case, yeah, see we're still a bit low, but that's okay. I always wipe it. Uh, put it back in. I'm clean up around this thing a little bit. It's like it hasn't been done in a while. 
but like they say, this is an old Detroit, so if it isn't leaking oil, it, it probably isn't running. <laughs> Tighten this down pretty good. There we go. That way it won't leak anymore. It wasn't really tight, it was just kind of sitting there. So Little things like that that I keep finding. But it's not major. This bus is set up well with the, um, all the filters, the fuel, and um, I have fuel and transmission and secondary um, oil filters as well. Alright, I'm going to start it back up. Um, the reason I wanted to add oil, like I said, was because the oil pressure was getting a little low. So there's the oil pressure gauge. And that's about what it was reading. It was only reading about 10 pounds of pressure, but it's because it was so low on oil. So um, normally it reads a bit higher than that. Um, so yeah, here we go. I'm going to start it back up. Today's Halloween. The kids are picking plants to make potions out of, because and they made witch hats. Witches for Halloween. And today is Halloween, so we're making a potion. Making a potion. First, we add all the ingredients. First, what? we put rocks and dirt and dried up plants. Now we're putting these soft plants. And then we're going to find a couple more things, and then we're going to add some water, and then we're going to stir it up with a spoon. You're going to put some dead man's toe and fever few? No. Little birdies, dirty feet, mango no, but, monkey well, we meat. we did put a bug in there. Frog's tongues. No. No? Oh. We just put a bug in there. We put a bug in there. He's going to go for a swim? I don't know. Let me stir it first so you can play with it. There we go. <laughs> and mom, we put a bug in here too. What's your potion? What does it do? It, it turns sand into mud. <laughs> That's what it does. Okay. Watch. I take a little bit of it and put it right here and watch. See, all the sand right here just turned into mud. Okay, so first thing today, what I'm going to do is in the back step area. So this part, and there's the back window, and it goes under our bed. And then here's the emergency exit area. I'm going to hit it with a wire brush and get all of the, the rust and stuff off and all that nasty gunk. And then use these two things on it, the metal primer and then protective gloss stuff. And then it won't rust anymore. And then we're going to... Um, what are you doing? So I took those boards up, um, you know, they, just, they were just untreated wood. And um, I should have thought through before I bolted that down. So I just had to redo my wall a little bit at the bottom. So I wanted, I got some, um, some two by eights. And I'm just gonna put like three of those will fit across this gap. So I bought three of them and I'm gonna put one in here permanently and the other two I'm gonna make it into a door. And we bought all kind of stuff to seal it and um, rubberize it and you know, some weather stripping and uh, we're really gonna seal it really good. And I bought some flush mount um, little bolts that I can, like we'll be able to snap it in place and then open it whenever we want. And all we'll see through our floor is uh, just the little bolts to snap and open and close the floor. And there'll be like one big like ring that's going to be flush mount. But everything's going to be flush mount to the floor. So uh, I might, might set just below the floor. That, that'd probably be ideally uh, set it just below the floor. And I'll, I'll you know, cut a little section out. But it, it should come out good, at least what I got on my head. But hopefully we can get all that, get it done today. Not the flooring, obviously, but get this done. And, I he's going to work on a little back seat area and so we can 
possibly build the bed too. But we got lots of good stuff. And then we're gonna paint the wood with this water seal paint. So that when the water comes up under the bus right there and it hits it, it will it deteriorate it. It may not. What you doing, Halloween? You found a piece of wood? Yeah. You gonna help us build? Power tool. Johnny's painting the two by eight boards now. And I'll put one two by four in and it'll take up that whole space. This is a water seal like paint stuff. It's supposed to seal and protect the wood from um, from mold and mildew and all that stuff too. So we'll see. Hopefully it holds up. And then we're gonna go with like that flex seal rubber stuff over the top of it to see if that, you know, figure any way I can to try to protect it. The old, the old panel, this panel down here, had MDF under it, and it, it's, it's okay after 30 years, so I guess it doesn't get too much you know, moisture hitting it, but it's such a dry area here. We don't know, but we'll see. If I gotta swap it out later on, I can do that. It's not too difficult. Just have to dismantle a wall. <laughs> and this is how this is coming out the back step. Like one and I just painted. All right, so Heidi finished up back there the priming, and then I did these boards for the um, hatch cover right there. And um, I'm gonna put the two by four all the way to the side by the bathroom, and I'm gonna put one two by eight next to that, and that's not gonna come out. That's gonna be permanent. And then the other two two by eights, I'm gonna. I have brackets that I bought. I'm gonna hook them. I'm gonna fix them together, and they're gonna be front permanently fixed together. And then I'll put all that together. Hopefully, I can finish that today. But while this is drying, I'm gonna go work on the engine. So something different. All right, Heidi's in there um, finishing with the rust oleum over the place she primed in the back. Where we're gonna build the bed. Hopefully, we can get that to that later on today. I am gonna do a little engine work. Um, the cool thing here, you know, you can take this little bar out and get better access to the engine. So, <clears throat> I'm going to come under here and show you these. So, you know, this engine is laying on its side. So, these are airbox inspection ports. So, I'm going to take this one off, number three. That's the one we were having a problem in, the number three cylinder. I'm just going to take that off. I have some silicone inside to reseal it. So, I'm going to take that off, and I have a little camera that I'm going to stick inside of it and I'll show you that I can uh, record it and you'll see it and uh, what it looks like inside the cylinder. Oh, it's not tight at all.
Yep. A little bit of oil in the air box. So I wised up and went and put some gloves on. Should have did that before I got oil all over my hand. So that is my inspection port. So yeah, oil is supposed to drain out of there. Alright, so I can see the side of the piston. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. So those holes right there. I don't know if you can see that. Those holes right there are that's the um, intake ports on the cylinder wall. And that's the piston right behind it. So I need to move this piston down. I need to rotate the engine to get access inside the cylinder so we can inspect the valves with my little camera. So I'm gonna bump the engine with this underneath. All right, so I went ahead and bumped over the engine a little bit with the starter and that released, oh, look at that. A safety switch so nobody can start it and that that opened up the valve the cylinder so I'm show you I don't know if you can see Let me back off a little so in there that's the thing that a piston is moved down out of the way so now I'm gonna put my little camera in there and see if we can see if we can see the valves so you got my little video I'm so there is the air box. That's the intake ports in the side of the piston. And I'll go in here. Now we're inside the cylinder. If I can get an angle. The cylinder wall looks nice. The cylinder wall looks real nice. I can't see the valve, so I'm gonna have to get my little. There's a little mirror. I'm gonna go get it. So I'm back. Here's my little mirror. That mounts. By the way, this was uh, this little camera was. There's a Bluetooth version, and I got the USB one because I wanted a hard connect, hard wide connection. Just because I felt like it'd be more stable. And I'll put a link to that on Amazon. It was like 25 bucks. That'll be, I'll put a link below in the description. We signed up for the Amazon affiliate program, so that means we, we can put links to stuff, and if you buy that product from that link, we get a little percentage of it, and it doesn't cost you any extra. It just, I guess it's like ad revenue. So, if you want one of these cameras, get one from my link. So I learned the hard way. It comes in a little sleeve that slides down on there, but that sleeve, when you go to pull it out, that sleeve tends to get caught up and hung up on stuff and whatever tool you have on falls off. So I learned to put a little electrical tape on it. And then now it won't come off. All right, so now you can see around the corner. So I can stick this straight in. I should be able to see myself. I don't know if you can see me on that. There's one of the valves. The good news is I don't think those valves are bent at all. Um, I didn't see I didn't see anywhere that looked like they might have hit the piston or it just didn't look like they didn't look bent to me so I think that's good news.
All done. And a little silicone. All I have is this clear RTV stuff. Um, I guess it'll work. I don't have. I normally would use like an ultra black or something, but I don't have any of that. You know, so I'm just gonna not worry about it. You know, I'll recheck it later on because you're not driving anywhere right away. So. <laughs> Feel a gauge. The injector has to be fully depressed, like in this one. I'm gonna stick the feel a gauge in right behind the valve, and you should get a nice pull. See? That one's good. I'm not gonna mess with that one. Now we're working on number three. This is the one that I thought was a problem. Well, this is the one that the injector wasn't working. Yeah, it's pretty, it's a little loose. This one's tight, you know? There's a gap there though, so we gotta close that gap. So I finished up with the lash. I set the lash on three. So that's two and three that the lash is set. So now I gotta do one, four, five, and seven, six. But I wanna set the injector height, set the timing on the injector on number three, because I haven't done that yet. And that's um, that's the one injector that I haven't done. So I got this tool, but this engine's 1.470. It's a uh, timing retard. Somebody told me this, I don't know all this. Well, I guess I know it now. I don't know if I'm right. Please comment if you think I'm wrong. Um, help me out because this is the first time I'm pulling one of these. Um, so this is the supposed to be the right tool for this engine. It's 1.47 and I'll show you how this works. You take this and there's a little hole in the injector head and that should, oh yeah it's way off. It's way off. Yeah so this little pin goes in a hole and then this is supposed to touch just the tip of the top of the injector this uh the injector yeah um where the spring rods i don't know what you call it um tap it i guess so and you can see in this case when i'm all the way in i can't get it over that leg so it should sit right on that and just smoothly turn but it, it doesn't so i gotta open that up a little bit Get the lock nut loose. I'm going to test. And now we're under. Now it's now it's under, but it's not touching. So I got to come out a teeny bit, just the way it's touching the shoulder at lip. It helps if you put the the wrench on the right push rod. There you go. Through and um, set the lash and check all the injectors now. What y'all making? A birthday cake for Ellen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's her birthday's coming up. Ellen will be too in about 11 days. See, I'm gonna package this up in this box when we're done baking it, and then we have to wait a little bit, and then it will be your birthday and she can eat it. Mmm, <laughs> yummy! It's a chocolate birthday cake. Now we're putting in the, the design. Very nice. See, we're using rocks and mud to make the birthday cake. Very cool. Very creative. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use this flex seal on the boards that Johnny painted for to cover up the engine. Okay. Tops of the boards are done. The side of this one and top and the bottom. This stuff is some stinky stuff. Ugh. All right, so I got everything back together. I just got to put the, this brace in. I did as much as I could. I set the lash on all of the valves and I set the timing on all the injectors. And really, the only one that was off was the one that I. Um, installed so on number three on the, on the injector timing but the, a couple of the valves were a little off they were a little opened up a little bit which I think meant could mean that there was an issue when it when it had to run away in the beginning if you don't know what I'm talking about go back and watch our other videos I explain it a little more um, I think that's in the first or the second one anyway um, that explains what happened to the engine but Lily's having a good old time trying to nest it looks like a net. Watch, there's thorns in that, Gwendolyn. You're going to get full of thorns. She's playing in a nest of thorns. All right, so we're going to go back inside and work on the hatch, and also we're going to try to build the frame for the bed. But I want to finish, try to finish the bathroom uh, space. So that's next. All right, so I just started up. Still got smoke, but I just started it, so the engine's cold. Let's see. Uh, hopefully it'll warm up, and that'll clear up. Um, did as much as I could, so like I said, the next step will be an actual Detroit diesel mechanic. Uh, hopefully that clears up a bit. So I heard they can smoke a lot when you first start it when it's cold, so we'll wait about let it warm up for 20 minutes or so. We'll see what happens. All right, so Daniel still smokes a bit. Um, I might have to end up bringing somebody. But anyway, how did you do that? That's pretty amazing looking. Well, the kids kind of dirty it all up now, but. So we're getting this up together. So the, these two boards are gonna stay in permanently. We did some of that uh, flex seal rubber stuff on the bottom to, to make them waterproof and also a sealant and waterproofer on, you know, before that, like as a primer. So these two are gonna stay and I'm gonna make a new panel, a new access panel out of those two. And uh, actually looking at that, I might need to get another board. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Boom. Happy Halloween, Gwendolyn! <laughs> Gwendolyn's in our new shower area, so that's where the shower pan is going to be. We're going to have a 36 by 36 shower. And I'm almost done with this. We're letting this, uh, that is that, um, I forgot what it's called. Wow. Rubberized undercoating stuff. Ah. We painted on. So that's, that's going to go right here. And then we're going to start, how you did that today. And we're going to start framing the bed tomorrow and we want to finish this hatch and we want to finish the bathroom wall. This is totally, see this looks crazy, it looks off. See this side is skinnier than this side, but it's the bus is just not straight right there. I don't know if it's wider in the middle or what, but all these boards are the same length and this is all square. It's just not matching up with the bus. so. You know, we, we did these little dudes. I have to get creative with that thing to get all these boards in. But, uh, yeah, this is really interesting. It's, uh, it's really interesting the way it's coming out. I don't know if the light looks right. But, yeah, it's, it's going pretty good. We got one more full day tomorrow. Um, that'll be next week for you guys. Um, hopefully we can finish the hatch, finish the bathroom enclosure. And we have the shower pan, and we want to get the shower pan installed. And then maybe... I don't know, I was hoping to do electrical, but I just don't, <laughs> don't see how that's going to happen now. I like to uh, be wishful thinking on my trips, but we wanted to get where we could stay in it, but I guess it's just not going to happen this time. And then uh, we're going to try to frame in the, the spot for the bed. And so at least we could maybe put a bit, put a place to sleep in it. And then we're going to use a compost and toilet, so I don't have to run any plumbing for the toilet. And then um, and as for sink, kitchen sink, we just got to buy the cabinet. We're just gonna buy a pre-made cabinet and stick it in and stick a sink in it. So that'll be easy. <clears throat> so hopefully we'll get to that. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up. 
Also, subscribing helps us out a lot. That's in the lower right hand corner when you're looking at the screen, the left hand of the screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week for more bus work.